Winning the Delano Polo Award and surprising the entire field is Friedrich Jaeger in the Vernstrom. This is Vernstrom's first ever polo, the first polo for an independent trophy driver this season. Jaeger had really not been anywhere in practice, but the German put up a blistering lap in qualifying to take Vernstrom's first pole. That's five points for his independent trophy campaign, as well as five championship points. Speaking of the Germans, the German manufacturer Gessler announced that Alexis Rainsford will be driving the Kyala Grand Prix in their third car. A rather surprising announcement considering that, uh, well, Alexis Rainsford wasn't expected to be seen at Kyala at all this year. Also, another announcement, of course, is that uh, Packer Carroll, the, uh, the Volpe driver, was suspended from this race because of the collision with Luciano Salvarol. However, Carroll is also has an injured wrist, so I think he got off kind of lucky here, where he gets to uh, take a race off for injury, um, a race that he was suspended from. So, uh, I'd have to say he's a little bit lucky there. But uh, regardless, uh, Volpe Racing Team does have faith in Packer Carroll's ability and will be back with the team for the Kayala Grand Prix, we suspect. A very classy move, in my opinion. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. As Friedrich Jaeger in that black and silver Vernstrom leads the field to the green here at Gothenburg. And here we have Julian Asoba and Leonid Roderick going four wide into turn one. Look at the orange and white Volpe. Screaming into one as Jaeger slides it wide. And Asoba didn't exactly give him space. And Asoba into the lead. And Jaeger going backwards. Disappearing like a Harry Houdini magic trick as Leonid Roderick now moving up to second or trying to around the outside Arto Kekin and Scott Bates three wide back there on board with uh, Benoit Vukler who started at the back of the grid in 40th position and look at this move flying into one and taking about 13 cars in one go Benoit Vukler really making a name for himself he didn't last too long in his debut but uh, great move early on by Vukler we'll have to see how he goes today Leonid Roderick now challenging Arto Kekin for the second position. Uh, Gessler won this race last year with Matthias Taub. And uh, Roderick moving around Kekin into the second position. Roderick has been the man to beat throughout most of the practices. I'm surprised he didn't make it on the front row. And he's really hounding Nasova in the Katsiv. Yulia Nasova in car number seven really holding on to the lead. Trying to uh, keep a, the four-time Master Cup champion at bay. Adrian Devereaux in car number one beginning to fight his way through the field. The... Uh, Reigning series, the reigning two-time series champion stuck behind the Vernstrom. Uh, Friedrich Jaeger really, um, I think that might have been a qualifying setup they have in that car because uh, they are hoping that uh, passing would be pretty difficult for this race, I think. But uh, anyways, uh, Adrian Devereaux, and now trying to fight off his teammate, Luciano Savarol. The Showbird cars are back in this race for their second ever appearance in the TM Master Cup Series. Alvar Setterberg and Andreas Ringdahl. Uh, who ran for them at the Cariala Grand Prix are running the exact same cars they ran at Cariala here today. Neither of them qualified too well, but uh, looking at Setterberg, running in 23rd. Roderick now has a dive on Nasova for the lead, and he's going to get it. Leonid Roderick moves into the first position in the orange and white Volpe. And Arto Kekin, as you see, is still in third. Scott Bates in fourth. Michael Sykes in, car in the Red 5 is having a pretty good weekend so far. He's in the title hunt. He just went around Greg Woodard in the 41, who's also having a pretty good weekend. In the Lycoya, as the Red 5 moves into position 5, right behind Scott Bates, the American Launch Energy Racing Team driver. Oh, I think we have a problem with the Vernstrom. Yep, he started slow and coming off that corner. Now smoke billing out the back of the Vernstrom. That's very, very disheartening because he had such a good weekend, looked like. Got pole, I don't know, and he's, he's holding one line, he's letting everyone go by, and that's Chris Davenport in the blue car, blue and yellow um, alert car, who's just kind of sitting behind him with the, oh, Turbo ran to the back of Davenport. Um, well, some people aren't paying attention, it looks like. And, uh, well, anyways, Jaeger pulling it off off track, letting the rest of the field go by. That's uh, that's a very professional move by him. And here we have, look, looking at Robert Dorian, car number two, replacing Packer Carroll. He gets hooked by Troy Adams, and he's sliding back in front of the front of the whole pack as they get coming. Oh, Davenport hits him. That's Setterberg, and Nick Dawson is sitting on the guardrails in the 58 car. Now, that is a big, big incident. And, uh, well, so, well, uh, two laps into the race, we've got a rather large accident over there. No, the officials did not red flag this race, but Davenport out early. He was feeling a little sore after he got out of the car. So, uh, unfortunately for Davenport, uh, he had a decent weekend going as well. As we're looking at Mika Pasanen and Davenport's teammate, sitting in 25th position in car number 70. Looks like he's got some damage to that car. He hasn't really had 
an ideal uh, two races with Alert. However, he'll be running with them for the Curiela Grand Prix, and we believe uh, at least at the round of Wales as well, and possibly a few other appearances. It'll be good to see him get some more runs in that car. As Yevgeny Kuznetsov, the very likable Russian driver, the rookie is sitting at 21st place. Cats of Engineering has not had a whole lot of funding to direct Kuznetsov's way, but they said that will change for the Karyala Grand Prix as Davina Henson, car number 11, taking a peek on the inside in the links, moves by, right by uh, Kuznetsov, and now we're going to have, looks like we have a peek off the rear of Henson's car. Yep, we got to look at the rear view of Henson. Whoa, Kuznetsov slides it wide. Yeah, you can tell that, uh, that number 8 car is not handling all that well. Henson took a surprising win earlier in the year at uh, Brands Hatch, and her teammate Melanie Klevno has also been running well. Henson really stretching the gap between Kuznetsov as we now go to look at Zelda Ashby in the 55 car as the running order appears on the left side of the screen. Ashby in the 55 car in a PSI sandwich, and Ashby used to drive for PSI, so that's a little bit amusing. She's been having a pretty good weekend uh, this week, and she's had a great season as well. So uh, Ashby car 55 we'll see what she can do in this race as you notice troy adams has an active time penalty for that collision with robert dorian he's over 40 years old and he's caused quite a few incidents this year but he's still fairly quick he won the tm lights championship last year and Nomoto really hasn't said anything regarding um troy adams's uh streak of uh, crashes however um i don't think they have a reason to to be quite honest uh, as uh, Yuli Nasova now comes under attack from Arto Kekinen, the Finn trying to slide around Nasova. Nasova in the catsup tries to defend, but it looks like Arto's going to have a little bit of a better line coming out. And as uh, there you see, Nasova didn't really get a very good exit as Arto Kekinen sweeps into second place. And Scott Bates in car 88 looks like he's going to try to reel in the Russian. Yamino Tenchi in car number 25 is running well again in this very brightly colored car as she's trying to hunt down Adrian Devereaux. No sign of the clockwork midnight car. We thought uh, that this team was going to enter it for this race uh, in some of the Cariola Grand Prix. Uh, no sign of it yet, unfortunately. Here is the red five of Michael Sykes. It's, oh, whoa, that wasn't very nice. This gave Scott Bates a bump and run for fourth. That's not nice. Greg Woodard's now going to have a run on the red five, sticking his nose in as you see all that momentum from giving, um, well, Mike, uh, giving a bump to Scott Bates. It's just kind of cost him so much momentum down the front straightaway and, in and pretty much instant karma right there. Syke is going to lose a couple positions just like that. You see Woodard going by. We're going to try to get by him. And, um, oh, Michael Sykes holding on, holding on a little bit better than I expected. But Greg Woodard in the 41 really gets a good run in there. Michael Sykes trying to make Woodard's life very difficult. But now in doing so, he's going to have to let Ashby in the 55 go through. And Ashby now going after Woodard in the in car 41. Now watch the 55. There is Ashby going by. Sykes tries to get back by Woodard, and he's going to do so. This is great stuff in the, um, in the lower half of the top five here. Uh, anyways, Ashby now making up several positions there. As we're now looking at Adrian Devereaux on car number one, looking at Matthias Tau, the defending winner of this race, as he gets way, way, way sideways. As Devereaux now sort of lurking behind this battle like some kind of killer shark, uh, sniffing his prey as uh, Taub holding on to that position. So Devereaux going to have to uh, uh, try again to get by Taub. Now here is uh, Robert Dorn. Got look at all that damage in the rear of that car. And there's his teammate. I'm going to lap him. No, not again. Leonid Roderick's had clashes with his teammates this season. Uh, but that was with Packer Carroll at Road Atlanta. And there you see Roderick, the race leader, had no intention of uh, giving Dor uh, letting Dorian off the hook. And their teammates, Dorian, I don't even think Dorian saw Roderick. Was you, you see how, how far up the right rear of that car is hanging. But even still, he wasn't really paying attention to blue flags out there. And um, Roderick shook his fist at Dorian. And uh, really, I think Roderick needs... Uh, see it's a teammate that's not going to run him off the track. I think he's hoping that he has Jacques Bouvier as his teammate for the rest of the season because they were able to race each other without um, uh, any mishaps at France. But anyways, Mika Posenin in car number 70 into the pit lane. It's, uh, I think that might be a bit early for that. Anyways, Matthias Taub, car number 10, the local boy here. He's raced not too far from this track here in Gothenburg, Sweden. He's looking at the back of Scott Bates in the 88 car. I think he's getting sick of looking at the back of that car, to be quite honest. Taub wanting to stick his nose in and really go at him. Peter Short, the four-time world champion, having a pretty good run, running in 17. 
We haven't really had a whole lot to talk about with Peter Short because his teammate Gaspar D'Souza has really had the better of him, much to my surprise. But um, even so, Peter Short has still had uh, quite a few really good runs and really good runs in qualifying in particular. But uh, now he's stuck behind Ian Cooper in the 777 car, and that's okay. Trying to get 16th place from Ian Cooper is now we have to see, um, well, what Ian Cooper's known for. Good line coming off the corner for the 777. Short making a move. 777 moving over with him. Ah, we get to see the usual Ian Cooper great wall. As look, he's cutting the grass just to keep Peter Short behind him. And I think there's a problem with that 777 car because he has really dropped away in the past couple of laps. So I don't know why he's really doing that, but he's doing a hatchet job on Peter Short's race. Now Peter Short's going to get a run on Cooper, tries to squeeze him over a little bit. But uh, I think if he went any further, that would have been an all rather huge shunt. And there you see, yeah, something's definitely wrong with the 777 car, because you can see how quickly the 22 car just pulled away for him. And he's still fighting for everything he's got. Okay, now I have to tr see what the 777 car is going to do this time. Because now he's stacking up quite a few cars, including Troy Adams as a time penalty, Kevin Dwyer. That might not be the, uh, the wisest man to do that to. And uh, Davina Henton in the 11. Dwyer lets uh, the 11 car go by. I wonder if Dwyer is just going to see if um, Henton's able to get the 777 out of the way for him. I don't really know why he'd do that. But anyways, Henton's got a good run in the 777 car. Henton goes around him on the outside. So that, that if that's proof positive, I think. That there's something wrong with that car, but Henton having a good run so far. Looking now at Arto Kekin, still sitting in second place. The announcement that Alexis Rainsford was joining this team for the Cariola Grand Prix seemed to take him by surprise because the announcement was made after Champ Car qualifying uh, just yesterday. So uh, Kekin is uh, relishing the thought, but uh, he did admit he was surprised at having Rainsford as a teammate for Cariola. Only as Landon Roderick is slowing! Roderick is slowing in car number four. Smoke is blowing out the back of the Volpe, and Roderick is done. Oh, he's got to be gutted about this despite winning at Carbondale earlier in the year. This has not been a very ideal season for Roderick, and the drive for five, well, might be uh, not quite alive. As Arto Kakinen pits on that lap afterwards, Yelena Sova in, in the seven car. Oh, D'Souza in. Uh, oh, well, that's one for the blooper reels. Gaspar D'Souza committed a pit in way too late and wound up just kissing the guardrails there. Chris Johns in the 29 car into the pit lane. He's been having a pretty good run so far. Kurt Pliskin, car number 16, is having a very solid run today in the Power Steering Incorporated car. The PSI boys are the big winners in this cycle of pit stops. And Pliskin in the uh, 16th Snake Coils car looking to have a great run today. Very distinctive car. It's a very hard car to miss on the racetrack and uh, that team very colorful outfit. Melanie Cleave now running in 11th in uh, car number 12, the Lynx L313. Uh, she's been having a very solid race so far in uh, that car, the Swiss driver. Didn't really, hasn't really, I think, uh, shown uh, her uh, speed in results. She's had a lot of good runs, but uh, of course, uh, there's not much to show for it as Yamino Tenchi all over the back bumper of Cleave. Now, if there's one driver whose uh, speed has not convert, been converted in results, it's Yamino Tenchi. Tenchi's had several awesome runs in this car, but uh, just things have always gone wrong, horribly wrong, late in the race, and uh, Tenchi winds up with like an 18th or 19th place result. Uh, she was in contention for the podium at Brands Hatch, but uh, that, uh, that just so slowly unwound itself as Peter Short and Davina Henton have found this battle and decided to join in. As here is Short trying to have a run on Tenchi, but that's not going to happen right here. Davina Henton's uh, uh, sneaking in as well. She's going to try the, the world champion on the inside. Oh, maybe a little contact there. I don't think so. But uh, as we come through the S, look at Peter Short flying it around the outside, swinging it wide, and getting trying to get around the 25. Peter Short driving like the world champion. He said, look at that. Now he's gotten around clean. No. Peter Short, great move there. That's got to be one of the contenders for pass of the year right there. Very well thought out maneuver by the former world champion, champion Peter Short. As Melanie Cleave now really dropping back a little bit. Gaspar D'Souza in car number double zero, despite that pit entry miscue, is running in ninth. He's been having a pretty good season so far, much to my surprise in that uh, year old Tremwell. Uh, yes, that is last year's Tremwell. Here's Chris Johns running in 21st place. He and Zach Duff. And that is Archer Harris making his uh, 
first start of the year in the number 79 place in Enterprises car. Zach Duff getting the inside of the car. Oh, contact between Zach Duff and Chris Johans. Johans into the barriers. And, and around goes car number 79 of Harris. And Johans' day ends early as he just got dumped by Zach Duff, really. I don't think there's any better way you can put that. Arto Kakinen still leads. This is the battle for second here between um, cars 55 and 16. Ashby and Pliskin, former teammates. As you see the running order there on the left as uh, Pliskin really trying to take that position from Zelda Ashby. We're running on lap 11 here of this uh, this 25 lap race. Uh, the lap times are on this track close to two minutes. So uh, that should give you a fair idea of how long this race is going to be. Pliskin tries Ashby on the outside. There's lap traffic in front of them. That is the promoter's option entry of Larson Jensen. Way up there, car 93. But Zelda Ashby really giving Pliskin a hard time. Pliskin trying to put the pressure on Ashby, but Ashby is just as uh, cool as ice right there. Adrian Devereaux and Scott Bates doing battle here. Devereaux, car number one, the two-time champion. Scott Bates in car 88. He's uh, the second, I do believe Bates is the oldest driver in the field, but he is certainly not showing that. Devereaux getting on the inside of Bates, and Bates really giving Devereaux a hard time to get that spot. Scott Bates, car 88, is on a bit of a winless streak, but he's been fast all year. Can't say he uh, hasn't lost his touch. A bad pit stop for Yulia Nosova is why car number seven is now all the way back in 16th. Uh, so Nosova, car number seven's got a lot of work ahead of her. Back to the battle for second as Zelda Ashby and Kurt Pliskin have caught the 93 car of Larson Jensen. Pliskin sticks his nose in. Here comes Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car on the left side of Ashby. He looks like he's going to be able to clear the 55, but does he have enough, enough to get a run on the 93 and get around both of them? In this next couple of corners, here comes Pliskin on the outside. Yes, he's got it. Kurt Pliskin a second. As Zelda Ashby has to be furious with the back marker. Larson Jensen in the Black Storm Motorsports car has really not had a good day so far. Melanie Cleveno, car number 12, into the pits. And judging by the look of the crew, this is not really a uh, something they think is going to take a, a short period of time. They're going to they're be holding her for a while. Lewis Kingston, car 17. Just as many championships to his credit in the last century as his sponsor, uh, but he's been doing a lot better than his sponsor has. Uh, Lewis Kingston's been very, very impressive so far this year and in Latin, last year especially, but uh, he's having a solid run. Let's see what he's able to do with it. He's uh, been uh, outscored by Troy Adams this season, but I do believe up the two, Kingston has done a much more solid job. Mika Pawson has also had a lot of problems today. He was involved in the uh, lap two crash. In the alert, Inglesby, he's all the way back in 33rd, a couple laps down. So um, this is not really an ideal day for him. Uh, like I said earlier, though, he's really looking forward to the car Alla Grand Prix, and he thinks that that car can has, have a shot to win. Luciano Savaral in car number three is beginning to really hound Greg Woodard for seventh. Uh, Luciano Savaral's really been shut out of a win. He almost had two wins this year in the bag. France last time out and Road Atlanta. Alessandro Rossini running in 24th place in the Tutino, a car that he helped uh, design to some extent. His, his race is going to end early uh, after a, a decent run in 24th. Ben Atkins in the other Tutino, the other full-time Tutino, is having a pretty good run so far. He's having a points run. Tutino seems to be a lot more reliable than they have been in years past, but uh, they're not fast by any stretch of the imagination. But reliability will get you points, and that is what they are this year so far. Atkins in the 50 car having a pretty good run so far in that 50 car. In the 17th place, you have Jenny Kuznetso in car number 8 and having a good run as well. The Russian driver. No, oh, no! No, big trail of smoke. Well, that's convenient, right? If you're going to blow up, might as well do it right in front of the pit entry. But Kuznetsov's day ends uh, with a huge cloud of smoke after a great run for the young rookie. As here we see now, the red five of Michael Sykes and Luciano Savarol. There goes Larson Jensen off the road. So Larson Jensen, who'd already been warned about blue flags, gets a rough um, introduction to the sand pit, courtesy of the red five. Looking on board, Scott Bates in car 88. And uh, there you go, off goes Jensen. Sykes, he loses the spot to Savarol, but uh, Scott Bates is right there to pounce. Not able to take advantage of it, as you can see how, how fast that Inglesby is off the corners. Greg Woodard in the Lycoya sticks his nose in, and now he's going to try to get a run on Scott Bates, who's going to be able to hold him off. Now here's Archer Harris in the 79 car, 
talking about bad back marker etiquette? Well, here you go. He's been holding up the leader, Arto Kakinen, for uh, about half a lap. And Arto Kakinen just dumped him like a bad ex-girlfriend. And off goes the 79. And Archer Harris. Uh, I don't think he was paying attention at all to his mirrors. But, uh, or to the blue flag warning that he had just gotten. But uh, uh, Arto Kakinen had and wanted nothing to do with having that Tener in front of him any longer than he needed to. But uh, it's kind of unfortunate for Harris, but at the same time, uh, he was kind of getting an Arto Kakinen's way. And uh, Adrian Devereaux at uh, Brands Hatch kind of pioneered a little bit. I don't really want to use the word pioneer but um, for this, but Devereaux really played a hardball game with some of the back markers, routinely shoving them off the road if they started impeding him for very long. I don't think that's something we really want to see more of in this series, but uh, I think we just uh, we just started to see some of this. As Arto Kekkonen hits the pit lane to make his second and final stop of the race, Kurt Pliskin in as well at the same time. And here is uh, Gaspar D'Souza in the double zero car, who's staying out an extra lap as usual in this race. That pit lane miscue might actually come back to help him out. Just uh, imagine if that happens and D'Souza gets good result as Pliskin leaves the pit lane in the 16, and he and there's Arto still in the pits. Bleskin takes over the lead of the race. Power Searing Incorporated goes to the front in a great bit of pit work by the team, and Kurt Pliskin putting a great middle stint there to put the 16 car into the lead of the race, capitalizing on both the speed of the driver and the speed of the pit crew. Arto Kekkonen, car number nine, is back in second, and the Gessler's really going to have to work hard to chase down the Lycoya. Kekkonen is going to have to pick it up. Luciano Savaral, Azelda Ashby, and Adrian Dever also had solid pit work as well. The Hodges Walter duo are going to be uh, really trying to chase down the FPO car of Ashby. But now, looking back looking back now at Adrian Devereaux, I meant called him a little bit of a killer shark, and uh, that's kind of the impression that some people get when they see that uh, really distinctive blue and orange car in their mirrors. Peter Short, car 22 for Black Diamond Racing, continuing to have a strong showing here today as he's coming up, uh, coming across the Toyati, the independent trophy contender, driven again by Vitaly Karpenko. Peter Short really looking forward to the Cariola Grand Prix in a couple of weeks. Of course, uh, he made his debut there last year in this series. Car 22 having a solid run. Uh, here is Zach Duff, of course, who's been hampered by a time penalty in car number 74 as he's also coming around to lap the Toyati, who's been uh, one of the more gracious back markers, has Karpenko. Uh, the Toyati, though, it is slower than the Tutino. Here's Yamino Tenchi in car 25, and that's Mika Pasanen in car 70. Tenchi is a, a couple laps ahead of Pasanen. As Mika Pasanen, uh, well, he's giving Tenchi some room, as Yamino Tenchi in car 25 continuing to impress today. Uh, in the clockwork racing car single car team they've been getting most of the promoters options this season here is Greg Woodard who is uh, trying to hold off Adrian Devereaux this is a battle for position Woodard in the 41 whoa Devereaux really sticking his nose in there he wasn't really going to give Woodard too much of an option if Woodard moved over that would have been a huge wreck and Woodard would have been on the uh, well on the bad side of that one Adrian Devereaux gets the position though, and now he's gonna hunt down. He's got to hunt down his teammate Luciano Savaral. You don't think Adrian Devereaux is motivated? This should be evidence to the contrary. As Zelda Ashby now is gonna have to deal with Luciano Savaral and the lap car of Robert Dorian. Dorian, who's uh, well, at least, he's, at least he can see out of the left side, okay, with that rear end all kicked up like that. But um, even still, uh, Robert Dorian has not exactly had the best track record today. Well. Looks like he's cleared that up and he's paying a bit more attention because Luciano Savarol's had a much easier time getting by him. I wonder what it is about that two car. Whoever drives it seems to be having some problems seeing things. Anyways, here's uh, Savarol in the three car now. Really beginning to reel in. Zelda Ashby, this is for the final podium position. Ashby in the 55, trying to hang on for FPO. Luciano Savarol in that emerald green three car, really fighting back. Really trying to fight to get that. He wants it bad. He's way down on the championship. He needs the points if he's going to have a run at the championship this year. He came really close to taking the Master Cup last year. And uh, he really wants it. But look in the background. Adrian Devereaux is coming in car number one. He just set fastest lap of the race. Adrian Devereaux is flying. And he, as Luciano Savaral continues to get held up by Zelda Ashby. But they're Ashby giving it everything she's got to keep that position. Here is Savaral and going around, trying to get around Ashby, get a run on the 55. Ashby not giving him any space at all. 
But here we are on the main straight, but there is Adrian Deverell lurking in the background. As they're coming around a lap, Scott Stoidler and the Manicor, who's had a disaster of a day so far. As Savaral gets around Ashby and takes over third, but Ashby trying to fight back. Now, I don't think Ashby's going to have enough, but can Ashby hang on to fourth? Because Adrian Devereaux is really, really flying as he's got, trying to get around Stoidler now in the 28 car. Uh, Stoidler, of course, used to drive that car before Adrian Devereaux stepped into it. Stoidler not giving Devereaux... Yeah, it looks like he is giving Devereaux some space. Looked like Stoidler may not have known, not have known that one car was coming, but I think he uh, saw what happened to Brands Hatch. But Ashby runs a little wide. Devereaux now is going to have a run on the one car to see if Adrian Devereaux can get fourth place coming into these fast uh, couple, couple of S-curves here. Ashby throws the block and is going to hold on to the position. Devereaux no, does not give Ashby the bumper. He, I've only really seen Adrian Devereaux do that to lap cars, not uh, cars he's actually battling for a position with. It's Devereaux really cut, trying to cut it in low. Oh, Ashby tries to defend. Might be a bit late. As uh, Ashby's able to hang on from that one, got a better run off. Devereaux's going to try again, though. Same. Oh, Ashby's going to really have to hang on here. Ashby again holding, on, holding him off. Ashby trying to keep this fourth position. She's, oh, but not, don't think that's going to be enough. Devereaux got a better run going through this cup, this uh, last couple of corners. And Zelda Ashby's going to have to give it up, I think. But they're side by side in the main straight. Great battle for fourth as, they, as the field takes the white. But Adrian Devereaux is going to get the position. Great battle there between those two drivers. They raced each other very hard and very, very cleanly. Ashby trying to get it, trying to fight back. But the Colt Morel Altair just so fast off the corners. As you see right there, but Ashby doesn't have anything really to respond to that. But she put up a great fight regardless. At the front, though, Kurt Pliskin's last win in the series is all the way back in 2009. Now, as he comes down the main straightaway, Kurt Pliskin and Power Steering Incorporated is going to take his second career victory in the Lycoya. Lycoya's first ever TM Master Cup Series victory with Arto Kakinen in second and Luciano Savarola a strong third. The other Lycoya, driven by Greg Woodard, came home in sixth. Lewis Kingston and Scott Bates had a pretty good battle for seventh late in the event. The Red Five of Michael Sykes dropped back in that last pit stop to ninth. Peter Short, four-time world champion, tenth. Great run for him. Henton, another strong run in eleventh. Taub, the uh, last year's winner of this race, uh, came home in twelfth. Nasova, Kevin Dwyer, Gaspar D'Souza all had strong runs. Ben Atkins in the 50 car continues a strong run of points for Scuderia Tutino. And of course, Troy Adams got sent back early in the race with that time penalty. Otherwise, he would have been in 14th. But 20th place, a complete zero in his debut, a total hero in his second race. Benoit Vukler takes home the final point in a double points result for Tutino. Reliability does get you points more often than not. And here's the top 20 in the championship. Coming into the Carriala Grand Prix with Adrian Devereaux, 83 points ahead of Davina Henton, second in the championship. However, I would like to remind everybody that Carriala is a double points race, so Devereaux's point lead is not quite as secure as it would be normally. Matthias Taub hangs on to fourth. Kurt Pliskin, one of the big winners today, jumps up four places into fifth in the championship. Arto Kakinen moves up as well. Luciano Savaral moves himself into the top 10 in the points. We also got to go back a little bit. Peter Short, 14th, and Lewis Kingston, 15th, also moved up quite a bit this week. Melanie Clevno, car number 12, did not really have um, as good of a result as she would have liked as far as the championship is concerned. Melanie Clevno doesn't exactly have a whole lot of luck this year. And also looking a bit further down, Greg Woodard jumps up eight places and gets himself into the top 20 in the championship. Kevin Dwyer rounds out the top 20. And one little peek here at the Independence Trophy standings. Remember now, the Independence Trophy cars don't score points for their participation in the Cariola Grand Prix, and all of them have been given a free invitation to that race. With that being said, the next time we will see the TM Master Cup Series in action is for the biggest race of the year, the 37th Cariola Grand Prix.